let's talk about price discrimination under monopoly price discrimination is where a firm charges different prices to different consumers for an identical good or service with no differences in cost of production so it does not include a situation where the firm sells to one customer at a different and higher price because the cost of producing it was higher or because the product was made with different specifications price discrimination usually happens in different ways it can be on income basis for example doctors and lawyers charge more from rich people than the poor it can also be on the basis of the nature of product like when two prices are charged by hill stations in different seasons and it can also be based on the demography of consumers like when barbers charge less for kids there's also the time of service geographical locations and the use of the product so these are the types of price discrimination now let's take a look at the conditions that's needed for price discrimination so there needs to be market imperfections because if there was let's say perfect information you cannot charge different prices if there is more than one seller there also needs to be agreement between them regarding the price fixation so price discriminators must also ensure that there is no one in the market buying the products sold at a lower price and then reselling them at a higher price so there should be a prevention of resale of the products that the monopoly uh, firm is selling there also may be artificial differences between the same goods for buyers who prefer to buy at a higher price and finally there needs to be differences in the elasticity of demand price can be charged low to a person with high elasticity of demand since they might not buy the good at a higher price and charge a high price to the ones with low elasticity of demand for the good as they will buy the good no matter how much the price changes and these diagrams show the price and output determination for a price discriminating monopoly firm here the total market indicates the single seller monopoly firm the monopolist sells his product in two markets 1 and 2 market 1 has high elastic demand for the product and market 2 has low elastic demand accordingly the demand curve in market 1 is d1 and its corresponding marginal revenue curve is mr1 and in market 2 the corresponding curves are d2 and mr2 and uh, in the total market the marginal revenue curve mrt is drawn by the lateral summation of mr1 and mr2 curves and mc is the marginal cost curve the point of intersection between the total marginal revenue curve and mc curves at e determines the equilibrium level of output oqt so here the equilibrium level of output is where the monopoly firm earns the maximum amount of profit the monopolist divides this output between the two markets by equating the marginal cost with the marginal revenue of each market to equal the marginal cost with mr1 and mr2 we draw a line parallel to the horizontal axis it cuts mr1 at e1 in market 1 and the output is oq1 and in market 2 it is oq2 and so oq1 plus oq2 equal the total market output oqt the prices are fixed where the profit maximizing output is extended to the demand curve and as you can see the price in market 1 is lower than the second market because of higher elasticity of demand now there are three degrees of price discrimination the previous diagram that we saw was the third degree discrimination let's take a look at the rest the first degree price discrimination is when a monopolist charges different prices for all different units of the commodity in such a way that the price exacted for each was equal to the demand price for it and no consumer surplus was left to the buyers let's say that you are a monopolist let's just imagine that you have a mind reading instrument and you know exactly what each buyer is willing and able to pay for your product i guess that would be the only way that there is no consumer surplus 
and john robinson calls this as perfect discrimination to have that perfect price discrimination there are two conditions one is that the buyers must be separate from each other and the other is that the monopolist deals with each buyer on a take it or leave it basis let's look at the first degree price discrimination with a diagram so in the diagram d1 is the demand curve and mc is the monopolist marginal cost in a price discriminating monopoly the marginal revenue is the same as the demand curve and so the profit maximizing output is at qt where the mc meets mr and the price is determined at the point where the profit maximizing output is extended to the demand curve now here something for you to think about what is the level of total revenue and the consumer surplus here if you thought that this was the total revenue and this is the consumer surplus you were wrong well this is right for a normal monopoly firm that is not discriminating its price but for a first degree price discriminating monopoly firm this is the total revenue and there is no consumer surplus because the monopolist sells to each seller what they are willing to pay so that's how first degree price discrimination works now let's take a look at the second degree price discrimination here a monopolist divides the consumers into slabs or groups and charges different prices for the different slabs of the same commodity a good example of this is electricity that is charged based on the slab rates of the kilowatt of electricity consumed the following diagram explains the second degree price discrimination so here we have d1 as the demand curve for the electricity c represents the cost of producing it q is our total energy generated so that's determined where the marginal cost equals the marginal revenue which is equal to the demand and these are the different price slabs that are being charged till the consumption of q1 units the price per unit is at p1 level for q1 to q2 units consumed price level is op2 and price level from q2 to q3 is p3 and these are the total revenue generated by the firm from the different price slabs charged till the consumption of q1 units the price per unit is at p1 level and therefore the brown area is the revenue for q1 to q2 units consumed it's within the orange shaded area and the cyan shade is the revenue for q2 to q3 units consumed when we add them up we get the total revenue for the different price slabs and the light green areas are the consumer surplus for every price slab finally there's another form of price discrimination called dumping where a monopolist sells a portion of his output in a foreign market at a very low price and the remaining output at a higher price in the home market so this is another type of price discrimination that's being practiced by a monopoly firm so that's all about price discrimination under monopoly